Hi, this is Amy Frazier. I'm Director of Marketing and Programs at Futurist.com, and I'm speaking with Kana Hudson, who does programs on the millennial generation for Futurist.com. So Kana, uh, mm -hmm. we're talking about money and the millennials right. and the economic situation mm -hmm. and all that that means for people in different points in their life. How are the millennials responding to what's going on? Right. Well, of course, uh, the economy is on everybody's mind right now. Um, and it, it has a really unique role in millennials' lives just because all of us are really coming of age now. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're in our first jobs, just getting out of college, just starting college, getting out of high school and looking for a job. Um, and so it's, it's really key in our lives. Um, one good thing, actually, is that we grew up in the 80s and 90s where we realized, we looked at our parents getting laid off, and so we realized, you know, job stability, having the whole job for the rest of your life probably isn't going to happen. And so that's one thing where we, we started out with an attitude that's going to be helpful in us coping with this. Another thing that we saw when we were growing up is this hugely increasing economic divide between the wealthy and the poor in our culture. Um, in the past, you know, of course you had the rich people and the not rich people mm -hmm. and the middle class, but it was, it, it was, they were a lot closer together. Extreme, right? right, right. And then in the 80s you see this, this huge divide growing mm -hmm. between the two and it, um, the middle class getting smaller and smaller and more people, more working class people just struggling to get by and get the basics. Um, and so that's something that's been hugely important um, as millennials uh, grow up and enter the world um, um, because it is more difficult just to get the basics for a lot of millennials. Um, and especially with economic conditions, uh, we see this need to really change things pretty dramatically. Right. Right. So, yeah. so tell me something, it seems like in some ways the, the 80s and the 90s were these periods of great excess where we became so leveraged with our debt. How are the millennials responding to that? Is it yeah. sort of the sense of having missed out on the good times and now having to pay the piper? Or mm -hmm. is, there a, is there a sort of new formulation of, of values that won't lead to that type of, of excess? Is there resentment, uh, yeah. um, optimism? Which, which way is it going? Mm -hmm. I think we're really at a turning point right now. So we grew up with, um, you know, the age of these huge mega mansions and that mm -hmm. kind of thing where um, and where our parents had uh, a, a lot of parents of millennials anyways um, had you know big houses right. and it's something that maybe we we grew to expect as we right. were growing up and then now we're learning that it, it doesn't make sense at all and we're kind of at that turning point where we realize that massive amounts of debt and excess and um, you know excessive use of our resources doesn't make sense um, but there's also a lot of, of a sense of, you know, sort of helplessness when it comes to debt. You know, most, right. most jobs in Washington State that are going to emerge over the next five years are going to require a college degree. And getting a college degree for most people is going to uh, require taking on a huge amount of student loan debt. And we see those numbers growing as well. Right. Right, so there's a, there's a huge hill to climb That's in terms right. of that. Yeah. yeah. And do you see millennials at this point, are there enough of them in the workforce that they're actually starting to change the way that we're looking at the work-life balance and, and what's important and what's sustainable and what's too much? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I'm not sure if we're in, um, in positions quite yet to have a huge influence mm -hmm. on that, but I think over the next five or ten years, we are definitely going to have a big influence. Yeah. I think millennials have a lot of capacity to become entrepreneurs if we get right. frustrated with the regular sort of nine-to-five lifestyle. Um, we, we don't have um, the same sort of tendency to want to work, uh, you know, long, long hours to compete with each other to get the promotion. If we don't like the way things are going at our current job, um, we understand that maybe it's time to move on because we don't have a sense that we need to stick with a job to get our pensions. We don't have the same um, right. sense of loyalty. Right. Right. So, yeah. so I understand the value of community is something that's important to millennials. Mm -hmm. and can you tie that into the entrepreneurial spirit? Do you see yeah. do you see those two things working together? Yeah, I see a lot of networking going on mm. between millennials. Millennials just tend to be pretty good at social networking. We're right. really innovators in that regard with Facebook or you know, other kinds of things that we do online. Mm -hmm. And in addition, you know, um, working as teams comes pretty naturally to, to many millennials at least. So you see things like companies hiring a bunch of millennials. Um, smart companies will do that um, so because they know that they can already work, work well together. So you see like a, a moving company hiring a whole sports team, for example, is something that happened is one example. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah. Good. Well, this is Amy Frazier, and I'm with Futurist.com. I've been speaking with Kana Hudson about millennials and the economy. 
For more information on Kana and her programs, visit us at futurist.com. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.